Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more geography. Now, St. Lucia, I think that's how it's uh, pronounced. Uh, you guys are up next. I know nothing about you guys. Uh, pretty sure you guys are like an island nation, right? Uh, but yeah, I also want to say I uh, definitely check out, uh, I did a DNA, Ancestry DNA test. Uh, uh, recently, and well, today we'll we'll actually well for you guys will be a bit. Yesterday got posted. Uh, that's if you're watching the video when it comes out. But anyways, I did a test and uh, definitely checked it out. Really interesting stuff. You know, I got to see where you know where our know, ancestors are from. You know, bloodlines from all that cool stuff. So definitely check that out. Uh, very interesting video, especially if you're interested in doing that kind of thing yourself. But anyways, uh, we're gonna jump to this video and check things out. Do do do. And, uh, there's a Lucia. You know Lucia, right? Anyways, we'll find out. <laughs> please hit that like and subscribe button, please, and thank you, and yeah. All right, we are covering the three St. Triplet countries of the Caribbean, and today we cover the sister triplet along with her two brothers, St. Lucia. If, yes. like most people, you don't right. know anything about St. Lucia, basically, if the Caribbean islands were a school, St. Lucia would be like... Oh, oh wait, it's all wrong. Wrong. <laughs> hey, back off! She's mine! She's mine. Oh, she's mine. Was that sexual? <laughs> yeah, St. Lucia is the hot chick of the Caribbean. <laughs> wow. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. As you know, the Caribbean countries get the least amount of views on this channel, so I'm giving them special privilege. I literally went to these countries. Like, look, I still have like my tan line. By the way, thank you Tourism wow. Authority of St. Lucia for contacting me and hooking me up with pretty much everything. So anyway, today we cover the sister triplet St. Lucia, the only country in the world named after a woman. Their tourism slogan is even let her inspire you. And even the country has huh. physical features of a woman. The locals clearly showed me that the tallest mountain in the- That is actually very surprisingly that it's the only country named after a woman. Only, only I don't know. I just find it extremely surprising, especially when, you know, a lot of people like named their boats and cars, you know, and they name them after women, you know, like why not name a country after one? So, uh, yeah, definitely surprising there. You. And even the country has physical features of a woman. The locals clearly showed me that the tallest mountain in the country looks like her face. These scenic volcanic plugs are her breasts, and the steaming volcano is her hey hey. Anyway, this intro is getting long. We gotta move on. <laughs> First off, the globe, shall we? Oh my god. St. Lucia is sometimes called the Helen of the West Indies because she was desired and fought over like more than any other island. First of all, St. Lucia is located in the Caribbean, part of the Lesser Antilles, which are all the small islands hooking on the right side past Puerto Rico, and further part of the Windward Islands, which are the bottom five islands that stretch to South America. It is about 27 miles long and 14 miles wide. The island has about 20 or so smaller islets just off their shores. Pigeon Island used to be an island until it was connected to the mainland via man-made causeway in 1970. The country is made up of 10 districts, with the capital and largest city of about 70,000 people, Castries, located in the northwest side of the country. The next largest towns would be Grosilay and Viewfort down south, which actually holds the largest airport, Hewanora International. This airport is where most international flights come into, which is why the country is investing so much in this one town to attract the tourists to stay, instead of complaining about needing to get taxis to get all the way up to the hotspots like Castries or Soufre. Oh. Castries has the second and only Smart. other airport, Castries George FL Charles Airport, which has a shorter runway that only handles regional turboprop and prop airplanes from other nearby islands. The country also has many other means of transport, the largest port being the Port of Castries, where cruises and yachts usually dock, whereas much of the cargo vessels dock at Port Cul-de-Sac at Buckeye Terminal, which holds massive crude oil storage tanks that cooperate with countries like the USA, Venezuela, and Colombia. From there, you have three main roads that go around the island, the East Coast Road, the West Coast Road, and the Grosilay Highway that goes all the way to the northern tip of the island. This whole section here is only accessible by small local paths, many of which are not fully paved or even accessible by vehicle. Okay. The country is planning on maybe building a highway in the future, but for now, the number six shaped road network is the main means of road transport. Also, fun fact, they are part of the Commonwealth of Nations, and I have to give a little retraction from our Liberia and Myanmar episodes. Like many other English-speaking former British colonized states, they actually do use, to some extent, imperial units like miles and gallons, so there's more than two. I knew you Caribbean folks were all right. We're not alone, Liberian man, Myanmar. <laughs> 
In any case, today most town names and places are named after French words, but have like an anglicized, bastardized pronunciation. Reason being because instead of renaming everything after the French left, they just kind of repronounced everything. So it's like souffrière, souffre, choiseul, chozel, carénage. Oh, hell no. I'm just gonna call it castries. For what it's worth, though, St. Lucia is kind of known for being the love and romance. I That's funny, though. It's kind of smart, too, you know. Uh the people have been living there a while, you know, at least it's kind of familiar. And, but then, you know, like, you don't want your country named after, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. But anyways, I think it's kind of smart. I mean, it's kind of different. Uh, yeah. I had something else I was going to say, but I forgot. Anyways, back to the show. <laughs> Castries. For what it's worth though, St. Lucia is kind of known for being the love and romance island of the Caribbean. It was voted the number one honeymoon destination by the World Travel Awards nine times. Wow. Oh, shit. That's romantic. Why, yes it is, Keith. I mean, the resorts and beaches are insanely accommodating. The views are pristine and opulent. You will see the colors blue, black, yellow, and white everywhere on top. Honestly, I don't... Uh, no, well, say I think it should be like, I know like, I'm from Canada, like Niagara Falls has been considered, you know, honeymoon capital of the world. And I don't, I mean, it's a cool spot, spot and all, but I don't see why you'd want, to, I don't know why it'd be like a honeymoon kind of spot. It's a cool spot to visit. And I think it's amazing, but I don't want to look at Niagara Falls as a honeymoon spot, but like a place like this, yeah, definitely for sure. Cause you know, it's tropical and it just look, it's looking really, just, ah, just looks really nice to look at, you know? And plus, you know, it has all those, features as they said earlier, right? Yeah. Telephone poles on cars, on buildings. Oh, and the Pirates of the Caribbean movies were partially filmed here as well. And you can actually see the real Pearl ship in Grosselet Harbor. They just kind of left it there after filming. Yeah, well, we have the entire set of Port Royale. Yeah, and we'll get to that in the next episode. Stay tuned. And speaking of cool things to see in the country, here is a list of notable spots and sites you might want to check out in case if you ever decide to visit. The Aerial yeah. Cable Tram, Pigeon Island, Rizzo Rum Distillery, the Diamond Waterfall and Gardens, Mamiku Gardens, Tetpal Peak, the horse racing track at Fort View, a ton of churches like these. Castries Market, the Central Library, Derek Walcott Square, King George V Park, the Apostles Battery, cool. so many abandoned sugar mills, but the coolest one probably being in Balambush Estate, this monument. But the most iconic landmark of the country, though, is actually a beautiful natural site known as the Pitons. But you know, the deal physical land makeup that has to be explained in the next section. All right. Sorry, Okay, so I guess now I can explain. The Pitons are the most treasured and revered landmark of the nation. They are so proud of these two sharp vertical volcanic plugs. Here are some janky drone footage shots I got, and it's even on their flag, which we will discuss on Flag Friday. Stay tuned. In any case, here's the landscape makeup explained. First of all, St. Lucia sits on the convergence of the Caribbean Plate and the North American Plate. This subduction is what essentially caused the Antillean Arc, where all the smaller Eastern Caribbean islands are found. Essentially, many of these islands were formed volcanically, and St. Lucia being one of the most active. The country is over 85 percent mountainous and about 77 percent forested mostly on the inland parts the tallest point being mount jimmy on the southwest side of the island these jagged mountains allow numerous natural harbors on the edges which is one of the reasons why it was coveted so much between the british and french and it also allows small rivers and creeks to meander throughout the valleys including the longest river the roseau that flows into the caribbean the country has no main inland bodies of water and the closest thing to a lake would probably be the reservoir created by the john compton dam on the roseau river the country really only has two seasons, the dry season from December to June, and the wet season from June to November. Hurricanes do occasionally may strike, but it is rare that they feel the full force of one. Only two in the past 30 years have caused noticeable damage, Allen in 1980 and Thomas in 2010. Finally, due to the pummeling winds of the Atlantic hitting the east side mixed with the warm moisture of the Caribbean to the west over the mountains, it kind of creates a miniature rain shadow effect which causes the flatter valleys of the southeast side to be slightly drier than the forested areas of the north. Phew, yeah, that's the thing you'll notice the south side actually is noticeably drier than the north it so if you live there what side is the better side you know or what side would you do you guys prefer to live on you know or does it really matter <laughs> Areas of the north. Phew, yeah, that's the thing you'll notice. The south side actually is noticeably drier than the north. It's weird. It almost looks like a savanna. In any case, I'm getting kind of tired. I need my triple shot of espresso break from a mug that you Noah. can get at So that means Noah comes in for this segment. Hey, I'm Noah. You can get a shirt at geographynow.com as well. Art, I asked for Noah, not you, so. Oh, yeah. I'm back. 
Now, physically, as a Caribbean nation, St. Lucia is special in a lot of ways. For one, they are a geothermal island with active vents, the most famous one being Sulphur Springs, the world's only drive-in volcano. Here, you can not only stop by on the sides, witness the steaming fountains and bubbling ponds of muddy water that have a pungent sulfur smell, you can also stop by the hot spring and mud bath area. There, you can jump into the warm pools or you can slab exfoliating mud all over yourself, let it dry, and then jump back in and wipe off the mud. Historically, St. Lucia switched I've never had like a mud bath or anything like that. It does seem kind of cool. I definitely want to try it someday. From being a sugar dominated industry to a banana producing powerhouse. Today, bananas are still grown, the largest concentration in Rizzo. But the industry has waned and more people are growing other crops either to diversify the agriculture sector. This, of course, leads us to the obvious fact the largest industry that keeps them afloat at around 65% of their GDP is in tourism. I'm a backpacker on a budget. Can I go here? Eh, kind of. You can find lower end Airbnb accommodations and cheaper activities, but generally, keep in mind most places of interest cater to the high end. Luxury cruise line dock daily and visitors usually opt to stay at high-end resorts. On top of that, like many other Caribbean nations, they have a 15% value added tax on purchases. Oh wow, I mean, okay. So you mean like sales tax? It's basically sales tax. Dang, California already has like 10% and I thought that was high. Hey, come here, man. It's like a duty-free zone, bro. Guys, shut up. My episode. Uh, anyway, one issue the country faces has been littering and outskirting rural areas away from resorts. To combat this, numerous recycling facilities have been built by the government, mostly inland by the town of Bexton, which is good because it keeps the land lush and green, not only aesthetically appealing, but optimal for animals. And here's our animal correspondent, to explain. Giriallo here. Yeah? St. Lucia is a reptile and bird paradise. Today, lizards and geckos can be found crawling all over, all over buildings and vehicles. <laughs> the island is a haven for birds of all kinds like finches and warblers. Snakes of all kinds are here as well, including what is considered the most rare snake in the world, Kuhes snake. The island only has two main wild species of mammals, mongoose and the agouti. Now you're more likely to find dogs and cats roaming around everywhere freely. It's hard to distinguish if they're pits or strays, but very- <laughs> I gotta pause it, man. Uh, I, I can barely pay attention to what he's saying because when he, the way he talks, man, it, it's just funny, man. <laughs> oh, dude, you're killing me, man. Roaming around everywhere freely. It's hard to distinguish if they're pits or strays, but very often they're most likely strays. And finally, the national animal, the St. Lucia parrot, is the only bird endemic to the country. It is a vibrant, beautiful array of colorful feathers. Thank you. Now, we finish off this segment as we always do. Food! St. Lucia is home to a wide variety of dishes, some of which you can find in other Caribbean states, like Kalaloo, Lambi, Pepper Potts. I'm, I made a, I was saying Marvel character Pepper Potts. And some more Lucian specialties, though, include things like cocoa tea, bouillon stew, farine and cassava bread, float bakes, and any drink made by the Pitone Company, as well as a national dish, green fig salad, and salt fish. Oh, and if you ever stop by, check out the Fondue Chocolate Plantation, where you can witness the traditional way of making chocolate. You can taste cocoa fruit, which is actually kind of tangy and sweet. And if you see him, say hi to Clinton. He'll show you the chocolate dance done in a massive metal tub <laughs> mixing the cocoa seeds by feet. And that's kind of the Lucian way. They like to make work fun, nice people, which brings us to... That look, it does look fun. Thank you, Noah. You are welcome. I asked you guys, the Lucian geography peeps, what do you feel when you say you are Lucian? And here are some of the things you said. I would say it's our language and how friendly we are. Not all of the Caribbean islands speak Creole. Right. So you'd be able to tell the difference. It's paradise. St. Lucian is a paradise place. The talking. The talking. You're going to say there, St. Lucian. The talking is the way we're going to say it in Creole, like a saca ferio. It's a must. You must find some way to come to St. Lucian. I don't want to be anybody else. I'm proud to be a Lucian. You know, I always enjoy someone asking me where I am from, and they'll be like, man, I have to visit this place. Um, St. Lucians are descendants of brigands, and they were fighters. If they feel something is right, it should be owned by us. Anyway, first of all, the country has almost 200,000 people and was fought over 14 times between the British and French, more times than any other country in the Caribbean. The majority of the country is Afro-Caribbean at about 85%. Almost all are descendants of slaves brought over from colonial times. In addition, there are another 10% or so of mixed race people, mostly between black and European. Then you have a small minority of Indians at about 2%, mostly descendants of servants brought over from Uttar Pradesh and Jharkhand 
Jharkhand in India back in the 19th century. The remaining 3% are all other groups, including the native Kalinago Caribs and white Lucians, mostly with English heritage. They use the East Caribbean dollar as their currency, they use the American types A and B plug outlets, sometimes the British type G, and they drive on the left side of the road. Which is funny because Whoa. you'll notice they prefer to import a lot of non-customized cars from Japan, so you'll see a lot of dashboard touch screens in Japanese, and the people just kind of figure out what the buttons mean without actually knowing how to read Japanese. I saw this in all three wow. same countries, no joke. If there's one thing that Lucians can show a deep sense of distinct pride apart from the rest of their cousins, it's the fact that they are officially a bilingual nation with English and their own unique Lucian Yo. Creole, which is French-based. During slavery times, the African inhabitants were kind of subjected to centuries of confusion. I mean, it was like... So, repeat after me, the word is address. N no, 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 no. Répète après moi. Le mot, c'est adresse. Address. 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 Adresse. And it stuck. It has been somewhat standardized. They have a Lucian Creole dictionary. Schools are allowed to teach in both languages. Essentially, they can pretty much communicate with all the other French-based Creole Caribbean countries. And generally, they can communicate with the French when they visit, as long as they don't talk too fast. I was told by you guys some popular things all Lucians say is, hey, 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 and hee hee hee, salop. I think that last one was like a swear well, so we get along great, you okay? Know, hey, 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 and you guys, you guys, hey, hey, so yeah, we, we, I think we get along just fine. Hey, 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 and hee hee hee, salop. I think that last one was like a swear word, but whatever, nobody except you guys, the Lucians, will care. The country is relatively well off compared to their neighbors, and it all has to do with the government putting a huge emphasis on education, which follows many methods from the Lewis model. It helped them transition out of an agrarian-based economy to a service-driven one in the mid to late 20th century. It was kind of like... Oh man, I'm a mess. I gotta like send a ton of my people to universities abroad. Knowledge is power and stuff. Hi everybody, I'm like totally more developed and geopolitically on par with other sustainable sovereignties. Wanna take a walk on the beach? I just had the sands imported from Guyana, but whatever. And that's kind of partially how St. Lucia has gone from bananas to luxury resorts. Anyway, that's like all the technical stuff. So now here's the fun culture stuff. And with that, it's time for Random Hannah. In essence, St. Lucia is a country that loves to show itself off whenever it can. In fact, October is considered Creole Month, where all the festivities highlight the importance of the Lucian Creole identity. During the festivities, many fun activities are performed, like bamboo bursting, in which the locals make makeshift cannons out of large, hollow out bamboo poles with kerosene fueled explosions. Whoa, that's really cool. We should do that here at Geography Now. Blast. I agree. I, I want to. I want to see someone do that. That'd be cool. Uh, uh, has the cannon ever blown up? Like, has there ever been a thing where it blew up in someone's face? You know. Curious. With, with kerosene fueled explosions. Whoa, that's really cool. We should do that here at Geography Now. Okay, that's a ball of kerosene. Like. Should you be drinking like a bunch of alcohol when you're trying to like uh, fire a cannon? It doesn't, doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do, but you know, never mind. Yeah, blast things up. The biggest festival, though, would have to be the Jazz and Arts Festival in May. Cricket is probably the most popular sport, Darren Sammy probably being the most notable player. There's even a stadium named after him. Lucians cool. are proud of the fact that they have two Nobel laureates, which make them the country with the highest number of prize winners per capita. Just like other islands on the French or French-influenced Caribbean, the Madras dress in the traditional garb of women. The majority of the country is Christian, about 93%, with the largest denomination being Catholic, at about 60%. Buildings in St. Lucia are generally built lower to the ground to withstand hurricane season. The tallest building is the National Insurance Building at only seven stories tall. When visiting, you'll probably notice that most homes are built on columns. And you would think it was to level off hillsides or assist with floods, but that's not necessarily the case. Many Lucians actually do this because they see it as a future investment. They build their homes as a single elevated unit, as the lower exposed level could eventually be converted into a second rental or business. And Finally, as mentioned, the Lucians take huge pride in their Creole. In fact, much of the recent revival is attributed to Creole artists in the music industry. They kind of popularized and made Creole cool sounding to young people. To explain that, we go to the swamps of Florida with Floridian Keith. Wait, you have one more line. Oh, and I'm going here for my birthday. What? Happy birthday to you. Aww. Happy birthday to you. Do you want to go to St. Lucia? Yeah, sure, I will go to St. Lucia? What? So, Hannah, you I have done nothing for you since you joined Geography Now. And I even missed your birthday. Uh, this is my way of saying happy birthday to Hannah. That's so cool! Oh my gosh! You and you Ian. All? You and Ian. And look at this Geography Now game. What? 
I want to go with Lucia. Hey, Lucia. My birthday. Oh. What? And look at this geography now, okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Hannah. All right, so hey guys, so just so you know, Rush is one of my favorite bands, uh, so you know, fair use and all that stuff, woo, no suing. Now, St. Lucia has lots of different musical preferences. Most fall within the general Caribbean group of genres like reggae, Afropunk, and soca. However, the one subgenre that is distinctly Lucian that all people are proud of would be Denary Segment. This style uses a much faster tempo, lyrics mixed with English and uh, Creole, and usually the words are quite explicit and controversial, but it's played off in a very satirical and comedic way. Like, they are some of the only people that can make domestic violence sound funny in a song. This is the reason why Denry segment was actually banned from the radios. Fortunately, it was brought back because it was like, Stop it, you punks. You are not allowed to play that garbage on the radio. We abolished Denry segment to the pits of hell. Hey, oh man, I love this music. <sighs> Let's buy all their albums and invite these Lucians over. We can learn a thing or two from them. Hey, those are my people and it came from our nation. Don't you dare try to steal our culture. In any case, January segment is played all the time during festivals and carnivals. As the romance nation, everywhere you go, you'll just hear some form of the Caribbean flair in the air. All right, that's it. I got no bass guitar today. CGI in bass guitar here, right here, or maybe put a fish in my hands while I <laughs> air slap. Thanks, Keith. And now we move on to the history segment. In the shortest way I can condense it, Taino native people settlers, Kalinago tribe invasion, pirate settlement from the French, slavery, French-British power struggle, brigand slave rebellion, battle for St. Lucia, World War I, St. Lucians enlist, World War II, St. Lucians enlist, Nazi U-boat attacks Castries, Castries fire of 1948, independence, fall of agriculture-based economy, age of industry and tourism, and here we are today. Some of the most okay. famous people you guys suggested we mention in this episode include Sir Dunstan St. Omer, Sir John George Melvin Compton, Dame Marie Sophia Descartes, Johnson Charles, Kenny Anthony, Chef Nina Compton, all these singers and actors, Laverne Spencer, and Compeche Creole Comedy is a famous group. So there you go, the romance nation with a Creole culture, throw in some pirates and iguanas, and that's St. Lucia. And speaking of romance, let's see who this hot girl of the Caribbean is totally dating and into these days, shall we? <laughs> St. Lucia is a country that loves to love, but she knows how to choose her crew wisely. For one, outside of the Caribbean, St. Lucia is tied heavily with both the USA and Canada as they make up the largest visitor group out of anyone in the world, whether by air or cruise ship. Business is huge between the two as well. The US company Hess Corp constructed a massive multi-billion dollar petroleum refinery on the west side of the country that helps assist in the storage and transport of fuel across North America. The UK and France, of course, are still heavily tied with St. Lucia as well, as the former colony of both states. Both countries people visit often and both even have small Lucian communities living abroad, mostly in London or in the French overseas territories in the Caribbean, like Martinique, Guadeloupe, or Guiana. St. Lucia is one of the only few countries that recognizes Taiwan's sovereignty over the People's Republic of China, and in 2007 they formally recognized the state, effectively suspending ties with the PROC within a few days following. The Taiwanese president wow. has visited and investment projects have been established, such as the helping of extending the international airport. When it comes to their best friends, however, usually it falls within their Caribbean neighbors. As the only three sovereign states in the Caribbean to have extensive French colonial background, Haiti and Dominica have a special relationship with St. Lucia. Haiti is like the big wild sister and Dominica, often called Dominique, is like the quieter twin sister that likes to read and keep to herself. These three are the independent French Creole countries, and even though they are quite different culturally, when they meet up, they still nod and totally get each other. For their closest friends though, I asked you guys the Lucian geography peeps, and most of you agreed, the French overseas island territories of Guadeloupe and Martinique, often called Guada and Martinique, are probably the closest. These three islands have the closest Creole, they love each other and visit often. Multiple flights and sea ferries connect them, and Martinique is probably the closer one as they were at one point a dependency of Martinique under the French West India Company. Today, many people have families in each other's islands and they are absolutely infatuated and in love with each other. In conclusion, St. Lucians are kind of weirdly proud well. of the fact that even though they have a history of colonialism and a little bit of chaos, they were still fought over 14 times Times more than anybody else, so they were kind of desired, and uh, and they still kept the identity of the Creole culture alive even after all those centuries. Stay tuned, St. Vincent is coming up next. And I'm going on a trip. Woo! We're going to Okay, that was weird. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh so St. Lucia, man, you guys, 
no wonder it was like fighting over you guys are like a rich country i mean i'm curious to see how much it costs just to get there and get like a hotel there they say it's pretty yeah it's pretty pricey which is probably why everyone wanted to you know, go there because it's just you know living the you know the high life you know going up there you know so uh no surprise there and yeah a bunch of cool sights to see you know it looks like a rich nice area i'm not saying everyone there's rich or anything but you know it, it as they say it's kind of built uh for you know people with a little bit more money you know so i'm assuming the people there uh since a lot of their uh you know uh a lot of their i guess money is from tourism uh i guess they're doing pretty well considering all the tourism is from you know richer people so i'm sure you guys are doing pretty well over there you know so uh um assuming like probably crime is probably not bad and you guys cleaned up like you know all the uh i say rubbish but you know looking you know, all, uh, all the garbage and everything you know that's all cleaned up so beautiful country you know so anyways guys please hit the like and subscribe button below please and thank you let me know if you live there please comment below if you do or if you've been there you know just curious and i'll catch you guys in future videos thank you for watching guys peace you guys have a great night and a great day i'm out here